So what is a two-dimensional Fourier transform? Well, it's an extension of a one-dimensional Fourier transform in a very natural way. In this video, we're going to look at some examples. So here's a one-dimensional signal, a sine wave, and if we were to take the Fourier transform of this, the one-dimensional signal, we would have two delta functions, one at the positive frequency and the other at the negative frequency. And here I'm going to show you that in fact I've got a two-dimensional function and in the other direction it is a constant. So in one direction it's a sine wave and in the other direction it's a constant. And if I look at this from above, this would be just like having an image. So this may be, for example, just exactly like having a photograph. And if you've got an X direction and a Y direction, uh, you can still take a Fourier transform. And that is what the two dimensional Fourier transform is doing. So let's look at this particular one and we're going to look at some other examples. So what would we expect to see in our two dimensional Fourier transform? Well, in this direction, we would expect to see two delta functions that represents the sine wave that is in this direction of the overall two dimensional function. In the other direction, we would expect to see a single delta function at zero because the Fourier transform of a constant is a single delta function. So let's see if that's what we get. And here we have the Fourier transform on the right hand side, the two dimensional Fourier transform. And sure enough, if we look in this direction, we see two delta functions, uh, one at positive and the other at negative. Uh, and uh, just the uh, indices of the vector are shown along the bottom, but I've shown it with the zero frequency in the middle. And if you're not familiar with this, uh, there is a video on the channel in the link below uh, which explains the relationship between the discrete Fourier transform and real continuous signals. Uh, and that explains the, uh, the indices of a vector uh, and um, all the other things about that. So I encourage you to watch that video if you aren't familiar with the discrete Fourier transform. Because the two-dimensional Fourier transform that I'm showing here is a discrete two-dimensional Fourier transform. And if we look in the other direction, sure enough, there's a delta function because as we saw in this direction, for, I'll show it like this, whichever row you go to, whichever one of these rows along here, if you go along that row in this direction, it is constant. So if we go along uh, this row here, it's a constant, that one's a constant. They're at different values, like this is a negative constant, this is a zero, this is a positive constant, but in this direction, it's every single row just simply has a constant. Another way to say that is there is no oscillation in this direction, which means that the only component in this direction is the zero frequency. And if we look in here, we can see in that direction, so in that direction, there is only the delta function at the zero frequency. That's halfway along this vector, which is where the zero frequency is. Okay, so in one direction, we see two delta functions for the sinusoid, which we have in that direction, that's the sinusoid. And in the other direction, just one delta function because there's no oscillation, the zero frequency. Okay, let's look at another one. Now I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna change the direction of the sinusoid. So here's a new signal, a new two-dimensional signal, uh, which if we look from above, it's like an image and the height would represent the color of the image, for example. Uh, and so in this case now, we have a sinusoid in this direction and a constant in this direction. So we would expect to see the Fourier transform rotated compared to the previous one, which it is. So now in this direction, we have the two delta functions for the sinusoid in that direction. And in this direction here, we have a single spike uh, because there is zero frequency. There's only a constant in that direction. Okay, so now as I think this is where I really try to understand the two-dimensional Fourier transform in terms of these pixels in the Fourier transform space. So each pair of these pixels represents a sinusoid in the direction that they're orientated. Okay, so this pair here represents this particular sinusoid. If the sinusoid changed more rapidly, so if it was a faster changing sinusoid, then that would be a higher frequency and these points here would be, these delta functions would be further apart because zero frequency is in the middle and there would be, they would be further apart for a higher frequency. 
Okay, so it's just exactly analogous to the one-dimensional Fourier transform case, uh, except now you've got the two different axes. So let's look at some other examples to try to explain it more. Now, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add these two signals. So we had one with a sinusoid in one direction, and now we've got the sinusoid in the other. Now I'm going to add these two images together. So here is a picture that comes about from adding the two previous pictures or the two previous uh, images if we looked from above and see them as an image. Okay, so now we've got sinusoids in both directions. So no matter which row along here you pick, if you go along that, it'll be a sinusoid. Whichever one, it might go through the peaks and the full peaks and troughs like this, or it might go through somewhere through the middle, but in any single row is a sinusoid of the same frequency, just different amplitude. And if you go along this one and you go along these ones, exactly the same. Every single column that you pick is a sinusoid, uh, of the same frequency. So now what we're going to expect to see is a sinusoid uh, in the frequency domain. We're going to expect to see these two uh, spikes that represent the sinusoid in that direction, those two spikes, and these two spikes that represent the sinusoid in the other direction. So I hope this is giving some insights. Let's, let's pick another function now. Uh, what about this function? And let's try to think what this one would look like in the frequency domain. So if we look in this angle here, again, we see that sinusoid. So in this direction here, we would expect to see those two spikes that represent that sinusoid. And what about in this direction? Well, in this direction, we are seeing the simple delta function at in the middle, it's a delta function. So again, let me explain that. No matter which row along here you go to, you will see a delta function. So this one is a positive delta function. Uh, up here, there's a negative delta function. This row has a positive delta function. So whichever row you pick here, it's a delta function. Some of them are positive, some are negative, but it's still a delta function. So a delta function in the uh, in the 1D FFT case would be the time domain. Uh, a delta function in the time domain is Fourier transform is a constant in the frequency domain. So in this domain, in this uh, direction of our image, we would expect to see the Fourier transform is a constant. And in this one, we would expect to see those spikes. So let's see what that looks like. And here it is, exactly as we expected. So in this direction, we see those two spikes because there's a sinusoid in that direction. And in the other direction, we see a constant because in this direction of the image here, it was a delta function. Let me spin that around again. Uh, so in this direction here, it's a delta function. Some of them are positive, some are negative, but each row is a delta function. And the Fourier transform of a delta function is a constant. Okay, so hopefully you're getting some insights into how the single uh, uh, a dimension Fourier transform translates into the two-dimensional Fourier transform. Here's another example. Let's see if we can guess this one. So in this case, again, if we look in this direction, we see a sinusoid, so we'll expect to see those two uh, spikes in that direction. And what do we see in this direction now? We see the, the square function. Okay, and again, I'll just repeat again, this row is a positive square, uh, one in the middle is a negative square function. Some of them are square functions that only go up to this height. If you go along these rows, some go up to the full height. But nevertheless, every single row here is a square function in this direction here. So what will, what's the Fourier transform of a square function? Well, the, we know from 1D, FFT, the Fourier transform of a square function is a sinc function. And sure enough, that's what we see in the Fourier transform. So here again, in this direction, we see those two spikes because in that direction, it's just a sinusoid at that frequency. And in this direction, uh, we see a sinc function because the sinc function is the Fourier transform of the square. So everything that we know about in one dimensional Fourier transforms carries across into two dimensional Fourier transforms. So let's look at uh, another one, and this is the, the last one to look at. Uh, this is one where in the, in the image domain here now, we have a square in that direction and a square in this direction. So now we're going to expect a sinc function in the frequency domain in each of the do two directions. And sure enough, that's what we see. So we see a sinc function in that direction 
and a sinc function in this direction because this two-dimensional uh, image and again I'll look at it as an image so this is if you have an image let's say it's all white except for a, a black square in the middle so if you had an image that was all white with a black square in the middle and you took its two-dimensional Fourier transform then this is the amplitude that you would get of that Fourier transform and the last thing I want to do is to point out the importance of phase. So, so far, all I've been doing is plotting the amplitudes of the Fourier transforms, and we often do that even in the one-dimensional case. But I just want to bring in here the picture of the phase uh, and show us the effect of the phase. So this is the, uh, I'm just uh, moving uh, these uh, pictures here. So I'm just going to move these up here uh, and bring in the phase. So he, this is the, I've plotted the phase here, and the phase goes between minus pi and pi, which is 3.14. So if I uh, rotate this around here, I'll be able to see that that goes between about th between 3.1, minus 3.1 and 3.1. So that's the phase. Uh, this is the two-directional sink, and this is where our square was. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to move this square to be, instead of in the middle, I'm going to move it to the corner here. And what we'll see is, it still is, as far as the amplitude is concerned, it is still two, a, squ a square in each direction. And so this picture won't change the amplitude, but the phase will change. So keep your eye on the phase. I'm going to hit the button now. And here we have the new phase for the square moved down into the corner. So now the square has moved into the corner. The amplitude of the two-dimensional Fourier transform has not changed. It's still a sink in both directions, but the phase did change. So just to, so you can see the effect of that phase and how much it changes, I'm now going to just move the square back to the middle, and then I'll move it back to the corner again. And you can keep your eye on the phase and see what happens. So here we go. I'm moving it back to the middle. And so that's what the phase looks like when it's in the middle. You can see that it's in the middle here. And I'm now going to move it back to the corner again, and you'll see the phase changes again. So the phase changes quite significantly. So it's very important in Fourier transforms not to simply think about the amplitude of the Fourier transform, but to also think about the phase. And in two-dimensional Fourier transforms, the phase is very important. So if I looked at this as an image again, uh, and uh, just relate it back to the idea of an image, uh, when we had the square in the middle, uh, we had this amplitude, but we had a, a different phase to this. The square being in the corner has the same amplitude, but the phase quite different. So the phase carries a lot of information in images when you take a Fourier transform. Uh, why do you want to take a two-dimensional Fourier transform? Well, I'm, uh, there's another video coming soon on the channel uh, looking at filtering images, and you're using the Fourier transform, two-dimensional Fourier transform, to filter images. So keep an eye out for that. So uh, if you like this video, uh, give it a thumbs up. It helps others to find the videos. Um, uh, check out the channel. Um, uh, subscribe to the channel for more videos. And check out the web page where you'll find a link to the MATLAB script that I used to generate all the plots in this video. So go to that web page uh, and you can look for the PDF um, uh, worksheet or summary sheet, which actually is the script for the MATLAB.